we're gonna do something a little bit different in this video. I'm actually going to look at two versions of the same tire, the Terravail Washburn. One is their light and supple and the other is their durable version. And we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of going light and supple versus durable, but also just handling them, seeing what differences there are. So if you do encounter a tire at a bike shop or a swap meet or something, you can use some of these indicators to see whether it leans on the supple side or the durable side. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you're into the non-competitive side of cycling, riding party pace, and living the supple life, you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. And if you dig this content, please consider supporting the channel and join us on Patreon. It helps all this content coming. Also, we've got a lot of fun merch, which makes great gifts for cyclists. So pins and patches and even original artwork. Okay, so what I have in my hands are the Terravail Washburn. These are a relatively newish release by the, by the brand Terravail, and this is their center slick uh, tire. So some of the characteristics of this tire is that it has a high center ridge, uh, as well as some you know quasi-aggressive knobs on the shoulders. And what this design does is that when you are riding on hero dirt or pavement, because of that high center ridge, it rolls a little bit quicker. I really like this design for a all-rounder gravel tire. Other tires that I've ridden that are similar are the Soma Casadero, as well as the Specialized Pathfinder Pros. So if you're gonna be riding 50-50 gravel and pavement, uh, definitely a tire with this kind of design is one to look at. So why would you want a supple tire over a durable tire in the first place? We've tackled this a couple times on the channel, uh, but essentially it has a really nice ride quality. And by that, I mean you get lots of suspension from the tire. Because the casing is more pliable, more supple, the tire will deform around imperfections to kind of cushions that blow. Also, supple tires tend to be a lot lighter. So in general, they spin up a little bit quicker I don't think you notice the weight as much on a climb and it adds less weight to the overall uh, rolling mass of your wheel and tire and hub and all that stuff. Downsides of a supple tire, um, obviously because it's not as built up, is that it can be a little bit more susceptible to, to cuts and, and punctures. And I think it really depends on the terrain that you're riding on as well as your riding style. If you're a little bit ham-fisted uh, on the bike and just roll over everything, then you know, honestly, a supple tire might not be for you. It does take a little bit of finesse and bike handling uh, to pick through lines so that supple tires don't get tore up. Of course, there's also lots of reasons why you would want a more durable tire. And now many tire manufacturers like Terravail offer that option. You can go light and supple or durable. Durable tires tend to have a little bit more reinforcement in the sidewall, uh, as well as some tires have extra uh, puncture uh, protection strips on the rubber itself. And the biggest pro of this is that it's at least theoretically less prone to punctures and tears in the sidewall. Granted, you know, if you're just unlucky and you hit that super sharp rock, it, it's gonna cut through both of these. So another reason you might want a more built up tire is if you're uh, going touring and you're riding with a, a load or if you're a generally a slightly heavier rider, a more substantial sidewall uh, prevents that kind of weird squidginess uh, with a casing that's folding over itself because uh, it's too supple in the corner or over rocks. So yes, there are, are advantages to a more durable tire. So in choosing, you really have to consider, you know, your riding weight, you know, the, the terrain, your bike handling skills, how you ride. Do you just like to plow through things or do you pick through rocks and all that? Yes, I do love the ride of a supple tire, but I feel like it does uh, come at a cost. You have to be a little bit more careful and there are some trade-offs. All right, enough jibber jabber. We're gonna see what differences, uh, if any, we can discern between these two tires. I think visually the light and supple is just, there's less of it. The durable tire is noticeably uh, larger, even in its uh, packaging. Okay, so let's look at the weight. This is the light and supple. I'm keeping um, the packaging on just, just for now. So this tire weighs in at 593 grams. It is 650B by 47, so there's a little bit more of it than a traditional road tire, so that's gonna skew the weight a little bit higher. In the scheme of things, it is a little bit on the heavier side. So let's look at the more durable tire. This one is 672 grams. So you're looking at almost an 80 gram difference between this tire and this one. So if you factor in two tires, that's about uh, 160 grams. So not 
a tremendous amount of weight in the overall scheme of things on a bike, but it is on a part of the bike where I think you tend to notice it more. You know, it's, it's constantly spinning. So I do think at this amount of weight, uh, some people would notice, especially if you're used to a really light and supple tire. Uh, if you're just getting into cycling, this, this is probably not a huge deal. So don't sweat it. Okay, let's get these guys out of the packaging. So this is one thing I noticed um, when I've looked at other tires that are light and supple is that they tend to, uh, again, not completely scientific here, they tend to transmit more light in the sidewall just because there is less kind of material here in the casing. So we're gonna see if that's true here. And um, I don't have the best tool to kind of scientifically measure light transmission through uh, sidewalls. Um, so we're gonna do, so we're gonna do very sloppy science. Okay, so we've got our durable tire. I mean, in, in just handling the tires, there's definitely a difference. Um, you can see that this, this really kind of is fighting me a little bit more. Um, it, has, it has more structure to it overall, uh, which again, can be, can be good or bad. So durable kind of buckles in the middle like that. Light and supple. Uh, buckles similarly, but as you can see, it's, it just flops around a lot more as opposed to, as opposed to this guy. I mean, it does eventually flop, but the breaking point is a little bit different and takes a little bit more resistance to actually do that. So just by handling the tires, you know, you can, you can get a sense of whether it's on the supple side or the more durable side. So for my very unscientific, uh, sidewall transparency test, if you will. I'm gonna run a light, um, my iPhone light through the sidewall and see. So you can see here, you know, it's, you know, it's obviously not transparent, but, but it is letting through a fair amount of light. So let's see what the difference is here. And I think you can even see it on this video. Uh, again, it's not completely opaque, but uh, it's not as hot on camera. So this is the durable tire and this is the light and supple tire. So I think, you know, one very unscientific way, you know, if you run into a tire and are curious, you know, if it's lean supple or lean durable is to just shine a light through it and see how opaque or not opaque it is. So putting it up against the window, uh, some light is passing through. And on this one, this one is definitely more opaque. Almost no light is passing through. Um, with the durable tire. So again, I'm looking for, for kind of indicators to help you discern whether a tire uh, leans supple or, or not supple. So we've got so far weight, uh, you know, kind of malleability as one would expect, but also light transmission. So I think that's pretty interesting. The next test I'm gonna do is going to be very controversial because I am not an engineer and I'm sure many of you are letting me know that already, but I am a curious person and I've always had the, the wacky idea of mounting tires, pumping them up to the same pressure and seeing if you can somehow measure the squishiness of the sidewall. To do that, I'm gonna mount both of these on some DT Swiss wheels and we're gonna use this thing. This is a, what is this thing? This measures hardness, probably not designed for tires. And I know engineers among you, scientists among you are already freaking out. You're gonna tell me I'm doing it wrong that this that this test makes no sense, is not valid, small sample size, all that stuff. But th we're gonna do it, okay? I'm a curious person. This is something I've always wanted to, uh, to try out and I bought the dang tool. So I'm gonna mount them on some tires, pump them up to the same PSI, and we're gonna see if we can find any noticeable, uh, measurable deformation or hardness or lack thereof in the sidewall. So what I've done is I've mounted the supple tire on the front wheel and the more durable tire on the rear wheel. Again, rims are identical, so we've kind of fixed that as a control. Some, some observations, I did notice that when putting the supple tire on, it was a lot easier to wrestle over uh, the rim. That's kind of to be expected. I mean, you saw when I was just handling them that the more durable tire kind of held its form a little bit. So took a little bit more wrestling, but both of them mounted pretty easily on these uh, DT Swiss wheels. Uh, hopefully we can seat them. I'm going to start with the front tire first and I think my plan is to get them at the same PSI. I'm using this, this pretty accurate analog tire gauge by EBT which has good granularity and then we're going to bust out this thing which measures hardness or at least in this instance 
uh, it's going to attempt to measure suppleness. I think what I'm going to do first is try to get a consistent reading on a particular spot of a sidewall, make sure I can get a, a reliable, repeatable reading, and then compare what I get in the um, hardness number or suppleness number in this case with the supple tire comparing it to the more durable tire. I might have to put sealant in this so it doesn't lose air. Yeah, I think that's gonna, they're gonna need sealant. So I think I'll just seat these up, put some sealant on, and then we'll get back to the video. All right, let's do this again. Um, I have put sealant in the tires. You can tell because I'm wearing my apron. Very messy job. So interestingly, um, dry mounting the tires, the, uh, the more supple sidewall tire did lose its air quicker than the more durable ones. So that kind of makes sense, but you know, just an interesting observation. So this is the durable one. Uh, it's got sealant in there. Let's just air it up, flip it around, drive the school bus, dribble the ball. Okay, so what we're gonna try to do next is see if there is some kind of measurable, repeatable uh, difference in the sidewall. And I know there's engineers and much smarter people out there already typing away, telling me how stupid this is, and it's not real science. Okay, I get it. I'm just a curious person. I wanna know if this is possible. If there's some way to measure off the sidewall and at least get a range or get a sense of whether the, the tire is gonna be supple or not. So my thinking is this, I could be wrong. Again, English major here. Um, I'm gonna pump both tires to the same PSI and I'm gonna see if there is a difference in uh, durometer reading. And the reason I'm measuring that is in, at least in my head, you know, the more supple sidewall should be more pliable and should at least reflect that in some kind of measurement, right? And what I'm going for isn't a specific number, but just generally speaking to see if you can measure it lower or harder, softer, harder, whatever. Let's do the supple tire first. And I'm gonna use um, this EVT bleeding gauge. And uh, I like this because it's analog, has good granularity and also fine control. So I think what I'll do is air it down to about 25 PSI. So this is 25 PSI and I'm gonna take uh, the shore A durometer and see if we can't uh, determine whether suppleness can be me measured off the sidewall. I think to make sure I'm measuring off the same spot, I'm actually going to measure at the same exact point on the tire. So where the T, where the lines of the T intersect in the logo. So that should be repeatable. Pressing it down till I hit the bottom. That is a 70 on the hardness scale. And I'm gonna try it again. Again, where it intersects, pressing it down. 75.5 uh, that time. Okay, 70.5. And I know there are machines that more accurately do this, like some kind of press or something, and that this isn't perfect, um, but yeah, we don't have that GCM money. So again, pressing down. Okay, so it looks like I'm getting with, within 70 to 75. It's not exact, but it will give us a range. Uh, one more time, so that it touches, and 72. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. At least we have kind of a, a spectrum. The highest number I measured using this technique was 75, the lowest was 69. So we'll say 70 to 75 for the supple version of the tire at 25 PSI. Okay, so this is the, the Durable version and I'm going to again over inflate it a little bit and then bring it down to 25 psi. Feels pretty stiff. It's at 30. Let some air out. One great thing about the CVT is like you can really dial it in. Okay so 25 on the nose. Once again measuring where the two lines of the T intersect and bottoming out uh, till the disc touches the tire itself. Moment the truth. Okay, 72, 75.5, 74, 74.5, 73.5. Okay, so looking at the range of measurements, the supple tire did measure in a little bit lower. Um, 
This was consistently over you know, 72, but too close to tell. So what this tells me is that there might be a difference. Uh, I don't have the setup to measure it accurately. So with this test, it's inconclusive. Uh, it was something I was hoping would work out just because I feel like a lot of people, you know, squish the sidewalls to tell if a tire is more supple or not. And I will say this, this does feel, this does feel squishier in the, in the, the sidewall squish test. And this one a little bit firmer. I wish that would reflect a little bit more on the durometer, but it did not. Okay. So those are the results of comparing a supple uh, tire versus its uh, durable version. Not a ride review, obviously, just kind of following my curiosity um, about whether you can tell them apart. If you do want a ride review of these tires, be sure to subscribe. That's going to be probably coming down in the spring because we are about to have winter here in Montana. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're almost to 100,000 people. Just hit that subscribe button. Let's get there. And as always, keep the supple side down.